So in our previous session, we did take a look at uh, the concepts on networking to understand what are the various types of connection models that we can uh, work with whenever we want to go ahead and implement any interface, right? Uh, so that we would know what is the type of connection that we may be using from one of them. Either it could be a folder to folder connectivity or it may be a TCP IP to folder or it may be a folder to TCP IP or from database to TCP IP. So it purely depends upon what kind of interface that you're dealing with, the environment that you're working with and many other factors. All right. So, and that fact would differ from each interface implementation that you're working on. Okay. So today we'll take a look at uh, what is Marth Connect. So we'll begin there. We'll see what kind of tool is Marth Connect. Most of you might be aware of what is Marth Connect, uh, but we'll start from basics on what is Marth Connect. How do we use, uh, or how, how does the application look like? Uh, what is the architecture of that particular application? How do we build an interface and what architecture an interface channel would have? So these are the kind of things that we are going to take a look at, at least at the very high level uh, to begin with. And then slowly we'll get deeper into what is channels architecture. What are the various channel patterns that we can create using uh, Mirth Connect? And we'll also talk, uh, get deeper into how to build interfaces using various connection models uh, through the course. So uh, Marth Connect, which is also called as Nexen Connect. So this is the application that is used uh, by uh, most of the uh, most of the hospitals or most of the um, pharmacies and and also by the labs. So apparently, uh, it is one of the integration engines out there in the market, along with other products like Rhapsody, CorePoint, Cloverleaf, Ensemble and and few of the other integration engines out there in the market um, out of top three or five inter integration engines Marit connect is one of them okay and uh, it stands out from the rest of them uh, for a fact that Marit is a freeware and it is an open source software when compared to other integration engines like rhapsody uh, cloverleaf or uh, any other integration engine uh, all of them are paid products and there is no trial version as well. Okay. So Mirth is not like that. It is an open source. Anyone can go ahead and install it and use it and deploy interfaces using uh, this particular product into production. So that's a very big advantage for mid-scale or small-scale hospitals or clinics or labs who cannot afford uh, buying an integration engine and maintaining it for a very long time. Okay, so the and so for such cases, working directly with uh, Mirth Connect is the best solution that these entities can have. So Mirth Connect is renamed to be uh, NextGen Connect, and this happened back in twenty sixteen, uh, I guess twenty sixteen or twenty fourteen. I don't remember the exact year, but Mirth Connect was taken over or acquired by NextGen Connect, and since then it is called as NextGen Connect. Uh -huh. Even if you look at the website and all, the name Marth Connect still remains and they have retained the name so that we can use the same name uh, for the product. So being an integration engine, it is a middleware. It has to transact data from one system to another. So the main purpose of having an integration engine is receive the data from one system and then deliver the messages to another system. And as it kinds of act as a, acts as a moderator between two different entities. It also has the responsibility to transform the messages in case if something has to be transformed. Okay, so integration engine does that as well. So as this is a moderator between two different applications or two different entities, it has to support various data models. It should also support various connection models. So Mirth Connect supports most of the data models that we have there. Uh, so it supports HL7 version 2, version 3. You can transact HL7 messages of these two versions. It supports DICOM. It supports <clears throat> EDI. It supports XML, NCPDP, delimited text. 
So these are the various formats that it supports. It supports JSON, which is not here on the slide though. Uh, it also supports JSON. And then uh, from connectors front or from the uh, connection models front, you have TCP IP, you have HTTP, file reader, file writer, uh, and then you'll have uh, JavaScript where you can write plain JavaScript code. Uh, you also have uh, web services, databases. So these are the few of various types of connectors that Murat can support. You can use any of these for your implementation. Okay, next we have something called as enterprise extensions. Now, Murat is an organization, right? They have their own employees and they also need to have uh, some sort of revenue streams, right? So um, there are a few features in Murat Connect which are not provided with the freeware. Okay, a few important features which are needed for production systems. Okay, so how do we get them? You can purchase any one of the uh, plans that Marth Connect have. Marth Connect basically has uh, three plans called silver, gold, and platinum. Uh, and if you can perform or purchase one of these plans, you will become the customer licensed uh, product owner. And then once you subscribe for any one of these three plans, you will get a 24 seven support from Merth Connect. And also you will get uh, the products, uh, sorry, you'll get the these connectors, SSL manager or role-based access control. So any one of these connectors will be available to you as plugin, which you can install within Merth Connect. Okay, so uh, then you would be called as enterprise client for them uh, and there will be a continuous support from them in case if you have any issues. So what are these plugins? So SSL manager is a plugin which will help you to go ahead and bind a web service or a REST service that you are working with and uh, make sure that it is bound to an SSL certificate. So that is called SSL manager. So SSL manager is really, really important if you're working with uh, it also on REST APIs or uh, web services. Then you have something called as role-based access control. So in Merth Connect, anyone who logs in is an administrator. He has access to everything and anything within Merth Connect application. So if that is something that we may want to control, but we, again, that role-based access control mechanism is a product that is provided as a plugin and uh, whoever has purchased their plan will only get it. Okay, similarly, there are many more uh, plugins. I think there are 10 plus plugins that you can make use of within Marath Connect. Okay, so, uh, so those plugins will be given to only clients who pay for the support. Next, let us take a look at uh, Marath Connect Administrator. So when you log into Marath Connect Administrator for the first time, uh, you will see whatever is presented on the right hand side of this uh, screen. So we can see that we have a list of channels. Each channel has their own name. Okay. And you can use all of these channels to go ahead and transact data from one system to another. So when I say channel, I am referring to one single channel, okay? Uh, meaning one single interface, which can go ahead and receive the data, perform transformations and send the data to the certain or required destination. All right. So there will be many different interfaces within your Merth Connect. As you can see in this uh, screenshot, we have 23 deployed channels, which means there are 23 interfaces that are running actively. Okay, so whenever I am referring to channel, uh, keep in mind that we are talking about one interface. So in within a channel, you have four components, source, filters, transformers, and destination. Okay, source will be configured to receive the data uh, into the inbound system uh, into or receive inbound data into the information, uh, sorry, into the uh, system. And then you have filters and transformers. So once the message is received through source, 
messages will pass on through filters and transformers and they will be sent to the destination component and destination will go ahead and deliver the message to the required system or required destination it may be a tcp destination it may be a host service and that that we have to send the messages on so it depends on what kind of destination that we are dealing with one key thing here is when you create a channel you can add one destination or you can add multiple destinations that's up to the um, interface design that you are going to have okay so the way we are going to take a look at this is we are going to get deeper and deeper we'll zoom into the channel architecture slowly and take a look at how the channel works and how the messages are transacted through the channel so that is the way we are going to take a look at one by one so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit into the channel architecture so a channel being a uh, data transacting uh, device you can say it will receive the data and it will send the data to the destination right so every channel is divided into two sections number one the source component or the source section of it and number two um, it is the destination component uh, Banzar, if you don't mind can you be on mute thank you so uh, we have two components as it one is source component and the other one is destination component these two work independently meaning the things that gets executed within each of these components are completely independent of each other so source will go ahead and receive the data once it receives the data it will work on that particular message it will pass on through source filters and source transformers then it will go ahead and send the message to the destination component so now you can see from the previous slide we understood that there is source filter uh, there is fil there are filters and transformers now as we zoomed in a little bit we can see that source has its own set of filters and transformers destination component has its own set of filters and transformers right which is uh, uh, which which tells us how they are segregated from each other even though source and destination are segregated from each other they always uh, are bound together meaning whatever is sent from source will enter the destination okay if source is not sending anything and it is blocking something it filters then the data will not be sent to the destination component at all okay so we'll receive the message on source connector pass it on through source filters and transformers and then send it to destination components on the destination side the message will pass on through destination filters and destination transformers and then it will be sent to destination connector where destination connector will determine where exactly the message has to be delivered to okay so this is the common uh, design of a message travel always remember we are going to focus mainly on how the message is traveling from the beginning till the end within a channel okay not only now but also in the future sessions whenever we build a channel or whenever we are going to handle the exceptions that we may have will be uh, always trying to understand what is the message flow what is the path it is going to take in order to transform the message or in order to receive the message and deliver the message to destination okay because that message flow and the path that the channel that the message takes through the channel is very very important that is where uh, the whole uh, design lies where we can use that message flow methodology to troubleshoot if in case something is going wrong uh, with the channel or with the interface that you're building okay we'll see that slowly so next let us take a look at channel patterns so as merge connect uh, it can go ahead and create many kinds of channel patterns okay so first one is integration pattern which is pretty straightforward and simple so in integration pattern you will receive the data onto the source connector and then message passes on through filters and transformers both on source and destination side and message will be delivered to uh, or may be written to the database or it may be written to another uh, uh, another uh, 
chain um, sorry another channel uh, which is which falls under chaining uh, but it it may be any destination database or it may be any destination folder or it may be any, any destination tcp ip apparently the channel will have a straightforward architecture you will send the message to source through source filters transformers destinations and destination will deliver the message to any one of these destinations next you have broadcast model so in broadcast model message will be sent through source filters uh, source and then source filters and then source transformers after completing source the default behavior of merge connect is to duplicate all the messages to all the destinations that it has that is the uh, default nature of merge connect channel or default behavior of merge connect channels you can say okay so as you can see in the screen we received the message onto source and then it passed on to source filters and source transformers and then it has been duplicated to all the three destinations that it has now we can compare this to an example where let's say you have one pm system and there are different different ehr systems in different different locations let's say we have three different locations PM system is centralized, meaning all the three locations are using that one single uh, PM system. Uh, rest of them are using, um, um, you can say that rest of them are using their own individual EHR systems. All right. So when a patient gets registered in the PM system, as it is centralized, um, it should go ahead and send the message to all the three different EHRs. So that three different EHRs should have that patient record so what we'll do on this source side we are going to configure or we are going to send um, the pm side of it so that pm as soon as the patient gets registered it will send the message to the channel then the message will travel through source filter source transformers immediately it will be duplicated to all the three destinations all the three will have their own different different ehr systems and then they will deliver the message to the each of the individual EHR systems. Okay, so that's how we'll go ahead and use broadcast model. So uh, Merge Connect, as I said, by default, it will go ahead and duplicate all the messages to all the three different destinations it has. Okay, if it has 10 destinations, it will deliver the message to all the 10 destinations. So it purely depends upon how many number of destinations you have. All right, the next model that you have is a router model. So as the name itself suggests, this model will help us to route the message appropriately to certain destination. So what happens in this case is you will have the source side of the channel. Now here I did not go ahead and show up in this window, the source side filters and transformers. Just assume that we are having source filters and transformers are done and then messages are duplicated to all three different destinations. Okay, so once the message is entered the source, they will complete source, source filters and transformers, and then each destination would receive its own message. Let's take a look at an example and see how this pattern works. So what happens is you will receive the data uh, from, let's say you have an EHR, or sorry, you have a lab system who is going to receive orders from different, different EHR systems. Okay, when they result back, they have to go ahead and make sure that they are resulting it to its own EMR system or EHR system. They shouldn't send the result belonging to EHR1 to EHR2. So lab will go ahead and keep sending all the results to this source component. All right, lab will go ahead and send it to source. Source will go ahead and transform or uh, pass it on through source filters and source transformers. And then the message will be sent to uh, all the three destinations that it has. Okay. And here within the destination filters is where the actual uh, logic lies. So what, what is present in this destination filter is a logic which says, if the message belongs to EHR1, then go ahead and send the message further. If it doesn't belong to EHR1, then go ahead and filter the message. So how do you adjust that? There will be some sort of lag within the message which will tell you whether that particular HL7 message belongs to EHR1 or not. 
okay so based on that we'll go ahead and determine whether it should pass on further or get filtered or blocked here itself similarly in the second destination also you'll have destination filter which says um, ehr2 whether the message belongs to ehr2 if it belongs to ehr2 then pass on if not then go ahead and block the message here itself similarly on destination 3 as well so this way it is helping us to go ahead and route the message appropriately route the message correctly to each of the destinations hence it is called as router model okay then next we have chaining model so in chaining model you will go ahead and send the message you will have a channel and you will go ahead and send the message to source and it passes on through source filters and source transformers obviously there is there are two destinations here one destination is writing the data to another database so it may be writing the data to the ehrdb or pmdb depending on the use case now there will be second destination as well for the same channel and this second destination is going to write the data to another channel which is present in the same earth connect instance okay so we are talking about two channels here this is channel number one this is channel number two so message will transact through channel number one and it will be sent to the channel two. Same HL7 message can be transacted to channel two. Channel two will go ahead and have again filters, transformers, and then destinations. And it will go ahead and write the destination, write the data to certain destination. Let's take an example. Let's say that we are receiving uh, results on this particular channel. So as soon as we receive the results, we want to go ahead and write the results to the EHR database. Along with that, we want to generate PDF files for that result. So what you can do, you can receive the message, one destination to write the data to EHR, second destination to send the message to another channel, which is designed to go ahead and generate PDF files. Okay, so it will go ahead and send the message to source of the second channel, and it will send the message to, uh, send the message or transform the message through filters, transformers, and then finally, the destinations which is actually going to generate the pdf files for us okay so this is the fourth connection model uh, or fourth pattern that you may be seeing are we restricted to go ahead and use this models or use these patterns no not at all this will give us a fair idea of how you can go ahead and design the channel so do we need to know how to design the channel from the beginning itself so that is also uh, the answer for that is also no because we are beginning with Marth Connect, we are beginners in learning Marth Connect, right? So experts who are already have experience with integration implementations or interface building, they will get to know or they will come up with better ideas of which kind of model that you have to go with, how to design channels, whether we have to go with router model or whether we have to create a chaining model or whether we have to create an integration model um, or do we need to combine one or two scenarios and then build a channel, build an interface for single uh, lab partner or single uh, destination system. Or So all of these things comes with experience, how to build uh, a certain pattern, which pattern to choose with, all right? So we are not expecting everyone to go ahead and begin just like that, where you can go ahead and start designing the channels. But what we are going to do in our training is we are going to see start with integration model. We'll build channels with the simple type and then we'll go ahead and slowly um, increase the complication by connecting to the database, getting data from database and then constructing HL7 messages from the database that we are connected to. And we will also do the um, vice versa of it where we receive the HL7 messages, how to interpret the data from HL7 message and write the data to the database. Okay, so any questions so far? Uh, regarding this, um, do we have any customizations on top of what uh, channel model that we discussed? I think we you have shown around uh, four, right? The channel models. Mm -hmm. Customizations in terms of the pattern or in terms of transforming the message? In terms of patterns. Pa so all of these are, so basically when you're creating a channel, this is what you will usually get. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. All of these are customizations. So adding three destinations is not a regular channel. You are adding two more additional destinations. So that's a customization. Once you add destinations, if you want to add filters on top of that and make it a routing model, then that's another layer of customization you are adding up on top of having destinations. So these patterns are basically modifications of the standard channel architecture that we will have that we have. Okay, but they may have uh, a number of changes, right? Example, there might be a scenario where I might need to apply some filters uh, at the source level. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, and uh, one more question, like, uh, so all of these seems to be fire and forget model, right? Um, None of them seems to be like two-way. I mean, uh, if you broadly categorize the APAs or the interfaces, uh, Mm -hmm. one I could recall is like, Fire and forget model, maybe the source triggers the request and forget about the response and uh, the activity is done. The second one is a request response pattern where source would be sending the request and waiting for the response to come from the target. So all of this seems to be like uh, model one, uh, the so fire and forget model. So do we have any scenarios in the channel patterns where there is request and reply pattern as well? Every, so that, that falls in the network category. So channels be, being a moderator it has to go out and receive the data and send the message to destination when it receives the data it will definitely send out an acknowledgement okay okay and it, when when it delivers a message to a certain destination it expects an acknowledgement so it's not fire and forget model um the all the integrations that we that you see in hl7 messaging 90 percent of them will expect a reply in the form of an acknowledgement to know that whether the message is delivered successfully to this nation or not. Okay. So, so this is all at bidirectional arrows then. Can we take that way? No, we are, we are just looking at the channel here. We have, we haven't included the entities and entities uh, that are actually going to send the messages. Now, in case of writing the data to the database, you don't need an acknowledgement back. But okay. When you're writing the data or sending the data to a networking system through TCP IP or SF, no, not SFTP, either through TCP IP or if you're calling an HTTP service, then obviously you would expect a response back because you want to know what happened to the request that you are making, right? So it depends on the connection model as well, whether you have to expect a reply back or not. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, Jitender. Yeah. Sorry, actually, uh, I was thinking something, you know, different. So are mm-hmm. we going to install today the Mirth or like maybe on the next session, we are going to install the database and the Mirth, something like that? I'll tell you the installation process. It is pretty quick and easy, uh, but I'll key, I'll tell you a few couple of things that you have to keep in mind while installing a SQL Server, which is one of the things that we need for implementing interfaces. And uh, I do have a question regarding the older lectures. So is it mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, in the MSH segment, we have, you know, encoding character. Mm-hmm. So the length is five. So that encoding character I used to, you know, so on the HL7 message, it's you look like, you know, uh, there is a tilde and then uh, and sign. So is it that fix uh, that everybody is using that, you know, the encoding character, the same thing, you know, same. Uh, mm-hmm. you, same characters. Yeah, same, same characters. characters. Yes, right. yes. Yeah. So HL7 defined those encoding characters. Okay. Mm-hmm. Along with that, they have also defined the position of each of those encoding characters. Oh. Right. So it is recommended that you use those characters so that you everyone in the world is using that and you are not drifted away from the actual standard characters that we are using if you want to use a specific custom character for your implementation you are free to go ahead and use it but at the same time if you're doing so then uh, you have to make tweaks in the integration engine to recognize that as a control character and uh, understand let's say that you are using star instead of tilde for your reputation Okay, you can go ahead and replace that in MSH2 saying that I am not using tilde but a star. Uh, instead of the position of tilde, you are going to put a star there. 
and throughout the HL7 message, you will use star instead of tilde to indicate a rep repetition of certain field, right? You can do that if you want to, but apparently people don't do that because integration engines and all of them are designed to use the standards that are provided by HL7 message. Yeah, I was just curious, you know, that's why. Yes, yes, you can do that. You can you can change if you want. To. Thank you. No restriction there. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So let us go ahead and take a look at the basic installation process of Mirth Connect and what are the components that we'll get when we install. So let me bring that up. Just give me one minute. All right, so if you want to install Mirth Connect, just go to Google and type um, download Mirth Connect. So once you type download Mirth Connect, it will take you to this website where you can download the Mirth Connect software from. So based on your system, whether it is Windows or Mac, you can go ahead and select a specific installation. So use 64-bit installer or basically the install, not the zip version. Zip is the portable version of it. So don't go with zip, uh, just click on installer and um, install it in your system. So once you download that installer, double click on that, click on next, 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 Mirth Connect will get installed directly. So it is very pretty straightforward process and it should be a smooth process. Let me know if you have any issues. One thing to keep in mind that Mirth Connect is a Java-based application. So we need Java to be there, pre-installed. If Java is not present, then it will not shoot up an error stating that Java is not available. So you have to install Java. Java shouldn't go beyond uh, version 11. So keep in mind, either install Java 8 or Java 11. Okay, so and how do we check whether the Java is installed in your computer or not? Uh, you can go to your command prompt mm -hmm. and just type Java hyphen version. Uh, you can go to command prompt and run this command. Let me paste that in the chat. That will tell you whether your system has Java or not. Okay, if it has, then it will tell you which version it has right now in my system. Uh, as we can see, I have Java 8. 1.8 is nothing but Java 8. So I am using 8. You can use 8 or you can use 11. Go to Oracle website, register and download Java 8 or Java 11. Okay. So Oracle has made Java as a uh, commercial product after it took over the Java. Uh, but the thing is, for the free use, uh, you can, I mean, for your training purposes and all, you can use it for free. But if you're using for production systems, then you may want to go ahead and pay for that. Okay, as we are restricted to training, you can go ahead and register yourself in Oracle and then uh, download it and install it on your system. Okay. My system but if you, is saying Java is not recognized as internal and external command. I think it's not installed, I believe. Yeah, maybe. So you can go ahead and install Java and then proceed with installing Mirth Connect. Okay, so Java is a required component, a required uh, installation that has to be there for installing Mirth Connect. 
then what about production systems if you want to use in production do we go ahead and use uh, java uh, can we not use java and then yes you cannot use the official commercial version of java so you have open jdk communities that you can make use of but that is when you go to production systems and you don't want to go ahead and pay for java uh, actual original java installations um, but for this training purpose please go ahead and register on oracle and install your java and then proceed with Marit Connect installation. Okay. Another installation that we need is SQL Server. So in the beginning, we may not need it right away. Uh, at least for the first five to six sessions, we will not need SQL Server. But I would recommend everyone to go ahead and install it and be ready by the time we reach the point where we need to use the SQL Server. Okay. While installing SQL Server, there are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. Uh, number one, um, which particular um, instance you are going to install. So let me pull up the screenshot. So during your installation of SQL Server, SQL Server maybe 2016 or 2019, anything, anything that you can want to go with, go ahead and install sql server express edition which is free of cost okay that is not a paid version of sql so install sql server express edition and while you install sql server express edition it will ask you to go ahead and uh, at one point you can see that we have the header here which says instance configuration so go, don't use named instance go ahead and use default instance that will help us to go ahead and connect to the actual default instance by default uh, or else if you are creating a named instance it will become a little bit difficult for us to connect uh, and as we know we have 15 16 people so uh, i would recommend go ahead and using a default instance as well uh, default instance itself next once you connect to default instance there is another step which we have to keep in mind which is nothing but database configuration Okay, here also you can see we have database configuration. That is one of the steps while you are installing after uh, instance selection. In, during the database installation, you have two modes, authentication modes, one Windows authentication mode, another one is mixer mode. So please choose mixed mode of authentication and provide a password here and make a note of that password. Okay, keep that in mind. So do these two things while installing SQL Server so that we don't um, end up in trying to troubleshoot what has to be done, why SQL Server is not connecting and all. Okay, just get ready with that. And if you are new to SQL Server, we have five, six session more, uh, sessions more to reach that point where we start using SQL Server. So I would recommend go ahead and using um, some commands, write some commands like select commands, update commands and some joints. These are the three topics that we will need. One is writing select commands. Second is updating uh, certain data in the database table commands. And then third one is uh, writing and understanding joints. Okay, so these are three topics that we will need at least at the base level. Now let us go ahead and take a look into uh, what are the components that you will get when you are installing Merth Connect. Okay, whenever you install Merth Connect using this uh, installation, you will get three components. Number one, Merth Connect follows client-server architecture. Okay, so the first thing that you will get is called Merth Connect Server Ma Manager. So this will help us to go ahead and manage the server. So when I click on that Merth Connect Server Manager, it will actually pop out or show up an icon in the system tray. You are not seeing that because I am not on the main screen. Let me quickly show that to you. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. So here in the system tray, you can see that M icon, right? So as soon as I clicked on Merge Connect Server Manager, this is where it will show up. It may be running behind the scenes, but once you click on Merge Connect Server Manager after searching for it, this is where it will show up. 
you can double click on that icon and it will show up this Mirth Connect Server Manager uh, window where you'll be able to manage what should happen with the server. Okay, this is the first component. Next, we have Mirth Connect Administrator Launcher, which will help us to go ahead and launch the administrator. Okay, so this is called as Mirth Connect Administrator Launcher. This is another component that we'll get when you install Mirth Connect. And after installing Mirth Connect successfully, you will be able to launch the application using the launcher. And that is called as Mirth Connect Administrator. Either you can do this using Mirth Connect Administrator Launcher, or you can click on this administrator button that you have, which will actually help you to go ahead and launch the application. So that process is in progress. Let's go ahead and wait for just a few seconds. So now you will get a login window this way, which says, which, uh, which will ask you for the username and password. The default username and password is admin admin. So during the installation process also, it will not ask you anything, just pass by with whatever default configurations that will come up. And this will be your default username and password. Okay, now this is our Mirth Connect administrator window. So whenever you are installing any Mirth Connect, you will get these two components, Mirth Connect Server Manager and Mirth Connect Administrator. So this is called a server related. This is the window which will help us to manage the server related things. This is the client, which is actually connecting to the server and running the channels that you are seeing here or running the interfaces. All the configurations that you have, creation of new interfaces, managing those interfaces, uh, seeing what messages passed on through the interfaces, everything will be done in this Mirth Connect Administrator client. Okay, server will help us to go ahead and see or restart the server. If you want to restart the entire server, this Mirth Connect Server Manager will help us to go ahead and do that. Okay, Administrator Launcher is just an additional tool that we have, which will help us to go ahead and connect to multiple clients if you want to. So we'll talk about administrator, uh, administrator launcher at later point of time when we actually talk about multiple instances of uh, or you have multiple servers that you have to connect to. Okay, but you are going to get all the three components when you install Mirth Connect. You will get all the three of them and just open administrator launcher and click on launch. It will launch the administrator window for you. Okay, so we'll conclude today's session here. Uh, you, you people go ahead and install it, install Mirth Connect in your systems and make sure that you are ready by tomorrow. What we are going to do tomorrow is we'll take a look at what are the options that we have in Mirth Connect Server Manager, understand each one of these tabs, and then we will get a deeper look at uh, Mirth Connect Administrator itself. We'll have an application tour to understand what are the various options that we have, what are these things that we are seeing, what are channels, what are the different statuses that we have? What is rev here? What is what what does it mean when you look at these numbers? And what what does server log say? So we have a lot of questions that we can answer from this dashboard window. Similarly, we will also take a channels, we'll take a look at channels window to determine what all channels we have. As you can see, there are many channels in my system. Um, so what is the view that we have? What is the statuses? What does the status say? So there are many things that we have to understand even before we jump on to create a new channel. So navigating through the application is the preface. So we are going to take a look at that and then we will jump on to creating channels slowly and step by step we will go ahead and start building an interface. Okay, so I'll open up for questions. Any questions from anyone? This is Jagdish. Can you show me uh, how to launch the uh, Mud Connector server? I missed it. Yeah, you can just type Mirth Connect after installing. You'll get to this, you'll get this option called Mirth Connect Server Manager. So once you click on that, it will show up the server manager in this system tray. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
and uh, Dixon, so when I'm trying to install Java, na, it's asking for uh, 64 compressed and the installer and MSI installer. So which one do we have to go? Is it for MS, MSI? MSI install? Yes, yes, you can go with MSI. Okay. I think uh, we guys will face a little bit difficulty in installing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Maybe yes. tomorrow we do, we do have multiple questions regarding that. <laughs> right, right. No problem. No problem. See, if you are able to install Java, it is a smooth process. If not, I would recommend you guys troubleshoot and we will anyways answer that. But I would uh, ask you guys to go ahead and uh, try to figure out why it is not getting installed. Put me questions on WhatsApp. I will immediately answer it so that you guys have some directions on how to install it. The reason I can give you a server where everything is installed but i don't do that reason is knowing how to install our product is the basic thing that we should be aware of definitely will encounter challenges but if you solve it then you have the solution with you you know how to install the uh, merge connect or java or the dependencies that are required so that's the reason i ask everyone to install it on their individual systems itself and the java version should be less than 11 or 11 like how it's like that 11 is also fine it's showing me Java 19 and Java 17 are available now. I am going to download. <laughs> I think it's no. downloading 19. I think. No, no, don't <laughs> install 19. <laughs> so if you install 19, it will not run this service at all. Yeah. So go with Java 11 itself. Uh, you will have somewhere you will have archived uh, folder, which will show you all the list of old Java versions that are available. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, so if you do not have any questions, we'll conclude today's session here. We'll connect uh, tomorrow morning. Take a look at our journey towards uh, Mirth Connect. Thanks, uh, everyone. One question. Uh, hey, Jagadish. The, um, when I'm trying to install it, it's showing the port, the web start port, the 8080. Right. And the US was showing, uh, that's 8080 is good. Okay, right? Like administrative port is uh, 8443. That's okay. You keep installing whatever you get by default. Don't change anything. Okay. All right. mm -hmm. Thank you. And Dixon, do we need to install this Merth Connect administrator answer as well? No. Okay. It is. It asked. will. It it will ask. Yeah. If it asks you, then go ahead. Go ahead with the default options that we have. Uh, it will. Yeah. It will ask you. Please go ahead and install that as well. Do not install it separately. Is what I was indicating. Okay. You'll already get it by default when you install Merth Connect. Okay. I mean, uh, it is asking me as if it's a separate installer. Install it. Yeah, yeah. Install it. Okay. Okay. Just give me one minute, guys. Hey guys, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, Kiran, you had a question. Yeah, yeah. I was asking, uh, it came as a separate wizard and installer. Can we install uh -huh. I think you answered my question that we can. Yes, use. yes. The reason why I was saying that is you will also have, in case, uh, if you don't install at that point, you may have to install it separately by installing it separately. So in the same download um, website that I have shared with you, there is another header which says administrator launcher right at the third one and do right. we need any kernel interface sorry kernel we don't no no we don't need that is for yeah. linux systems hey dixon so when i'm trying to install java now it's saying java se development kit is it a development kit or like something 
uh jre is enough even even if you are installing sdk that's okay worries you can install that and uh, in the 11 version uh, there are multiple versions like 11.0.17 mm. and then you know 11.0.16.1 so which version is fine you know is any anything on 11 is okay 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 and uh, it's showing 64 installer and uh, windows 64 compressed archive so which one you have to go installer it's not yes showing... installer install oh. go with installer mm -hmm. Sorry to bother you again and again. You know, no worries, no worries. Yeah. Sorry. And Dixon, how to validate whether the uh, install is successful or not? If you are able to launch administrator, then your installation is successful. Okay. If you are unable to launch administrator, it means that there is something wrong with the server and the yeah. uh, server will not be running. Okay. I could see a screen with connect administrator launcher 1.3.0 with some address customization heap size console and everything so which means the installation is successful right uh yes if you are able to launch uh, no after, that is a server uh, component of it so oh. you click on administrator and you, if you are able to launch the administrator window where we actually saw the interfaces channels and all then that is when you can say that your interface is running fine okay. your uh, installation is running fine sure All right. Uh, if, when I when I launch the Earth, uh, it's asking for uh, a new password. Will it ask like you know it's uh, when I, I logged in with admin admin? Mm -hmm. Now it is asking me to enter a new password after. Uh, it, uh, I would recommend using or retaining or using the admin admin itself. Do not change the password. Okay, because it's showing in the first window. It Correct. To... As soon as you log in, it will show up. Do not give okay. a new password. Or don't give any new password. Yeah. So just close this uh, uh, window. Or... You can you can give all the details, but okay. do not change. Use the same admin admin as the password again. Okay, just use the same admin. Right. Even in the new password, same. Password. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and conclude today's session here. Thanks everyone, enjoy your day. We'll catch up tomorrow. Mm -hmm.